In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you to this ordination mass of Brother Joseph Sean Balaam. It brings back memories for me. I say this every time I come here, but 39 years ago, I was ordained here in this place by the late Cardinal Hume. St. Dominic's is very dear to me, and uh, it's lovely to see it being restored to its former glory. I'd especially like to welcome today Sean's parents, Brother Joseph's parents, um, and, to, and his family, and to thank them very specially for the gift of their son to the church and to the Dominican order. These are not easy times. We know what uh, we've all suffered different kinds of hardship in the last couple of years. But handing over a son to the church is always a particular sacrifice, but it shows an enormous generosity of heart. And I would just like to thank you on behalf of the order and on behalf of the church for this very great gift. It's uh, something which we treat very preciously and I can assure you that we will all work so hard through our prayers and through our, through our fraternity to see that Brother Joseph Sean is, is not only looked after but will actually flourish and be extremely happy with us here as a priest in the Order of Preachers. I'd also like to thank all of you who have turned out today because we still have COVID restrictions and we must be careful. So it's very good of you to come. And although we're socially distanced, we are we're here as uh, representatives of the people of God, to witness to this very awesome thing which will happen today. In particular, I'd like to welcome Abbot Hugh, who is from the Fremont's Retention Order, and he is responsible, as well as for the Fremont's Retention community in England, he is also responsible for one-fifth of the Earth's surface. Can you believe that? He's the Prefect Apostolic of the South Atlantic and the Falkland Islands, St. Helena, Ascension Island, Tristan da Cunha, all those places where we, we only know from the stamps that we used to collect as children. But there we are. So we are very welcome, Abbot Hugh, and very welcome. Also, big welcome to all the other religious and priests and deacons who have come here today. Not Forgetting our Dominican sisters, it's so lovely to see you turning out in such numbers. Today is, as much as anything, a celebration of joy and love. So often we forget to be people of joy because that is what the gospel should do to us, should make us joyful people. And we tend to leave that sometimes to one side. But also we allow our personal preferences to hinder the way in which we love other people. So for those failings, we ask the Lord forgiveness and we turn to him now and confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, <clears throat> and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will, to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Spirit came into me and made me stand up, and I heard the Lord speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to the rebels who have turned against me. Till now, they and their ancestors have been in revolt against me. The sons are defiant and obstinate. I am sending you to them to say, The Lord says this. Whether they listen or not, this set of rebels shall know there is a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Our eyes are on the Lord till he show us his mercy. To you have I lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens, my eyes like the eyes of slaves on the hand of their lords. Like the eyes of a servant, on the hand of her mistress. So our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the rich, with the proud man's disdain. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In view of the extraordinary nature of these revelations, to stop me from getting too proud, I was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat me and to stop me from getting too proud. About this thing, I have pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me. But he has said, My grace is enough for you. My power is at its best in weakness. So I shall be very happy to make my weaknesses my special boast so that the power of Christ may stay over me. And that is why I am quite content with my weaknesses and with insults, hardships, persecutions, and the agonies I go through for Christ's sake. For it is when I am weak that I am strong. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went to his hometown and his disciples accompanied him. With the coming of the Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and most of them were astonished when they heard him. They said, Where did the man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been granted him, and these miracles that are worked through him? This is the carpenter, surely, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Josset and Jude and Simon. His sisters, too, Are they not here with us? And they would not accept him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is only despised in his own country, among his own relations, and in his own house. And he could work no miracle there, though he cured a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let Joseph Balaam, who is to be ordained priest, please come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man our brother for service as priest. Do you judge him to be worthy? After inquiry among the people of Christ, and upon recommendation of those concerned with his training, I testify that he has been found worthy. Thanks be to God. We rely on the help of the Lord God and our Saviour Jesus Christ, and we choose this man, our brother, for priesthood in the Presbyteral Order. Thanks be to God. Joseph, in a few moments you will be a priest of the new covenant. The awesome events which are about to take place will give you a special gift to help you on your journey. But more to the point, will enable you to serve God's faithful people in a special way. As a priest in the order of preachers, you will have a special responsibility to preach the word made flesh. And on this feast of blessed Pier Giorgio Fassati, a lay member of our order, we are reminded that the priesthood of all believers is a gift of baptism that all Christians share. This young man offered his earthly death to the Lord in the way he lived his life, joyously. 
And that is surely the way you must live the ministerial priesthood. Blessed Pierre Giorgio helps us all get a true and contemporary perspective on the meaning and purpose of Christian living. And that view is expressed today in the joy we are experiencing, and rightly so. Priesthood, especially ministerial priesthood, is a gift to the church. It can never be your personal possession. But for a priest to keep the gift you will receive, he will need to practice detachment from the worldly things which are so attractive and draw us away from the focus of life, Jesus Christ, and his body, the people of God. The detachment from worldly things that you will live out in your daily life is something that the pastoral priest strives to achieve. When the newly ordained priest is presented with bread and wine later in the ordination rite, I will address him, that is to say you, Joseph, as follows. Accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Know what you are doing and imitate the mystery you celebrate. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. There's sufficient fruit in these two short sentences for a lifetime's reflection. And the life of the priest is characterized by the offering of sacrifice expressed above all at the altar each day. It's articulated in his constant prayer for the church, the world, and the community entrusted to his care. And it's borne witness to in his celibacy for the sake of the kingdom. And is made real in the pastoral ministry among the faithful, especially among the poor, like blessed Pierre Giorgio Fossati. The brand of detachment, though peculiar to the priesthood, is colored and given nuance in the giving of one's life in the service of God and for the salvation of his people. So while striving to grow in the likeness of Christ and honoring God by a courageous witness of faith and love, the priesthood is a call to allow the word spoken each day at Mass to become flesh among the people of God in our wholehearted service to him and of them. The words of the Lord come to mind. This is my body which will be given up for you. This is the cup of my blood and it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. The entire mystery of God among us, the incarnate word, is the effecting of reconciliation and the forgiveness of sins. The Eucharist, which is at the very center of a priest's life, and which is the fount and summit of the lives of all disciples, is the true representation of the Lord's sacrifice by which he restores unity to all creation and to the fragmented family of humanity. And this marvelous unity is highlighted even further in the mystery of our being made one body, one spirit in Christ through the sacramental grafting on to him. So in this manner, the word is made flesh in us, in the lives of priests and the people, but also perhaps a special way for the priests who offer themselves to God for the service of his people. In our own order, the lives of religious men and women whose obedience indicates the transitory nature of this earthly life and the coming kingdom which will have no end.
And like Blessed Georgia, in all those of whatever age or station who make Christ present in a life of faith and joyful hope revealed in prayer and acts of love. For many people nowadays, detachment is seen as unnecessary or too hard in some way. I've heard it said, it's not necessary to become a priest. You can follow a married vocation or work for the poor as a lay person like Blessed Pierre Georgia. However, for you, Joseph, that's not the way our Lord wants for you. But detachment should not frighten us so much when we consider it as something that many people already do out of love and out of necessity for their chosen way of living. Detachment is basically the loosening of those bonds that tie us to selfish interest and self-seeking. It's a process of freeing ourselves for genuine love which always has the interest of others at heart. The positive response to our Lord's invitation to leave all and take up our cross each day and follow him is expressed different ways. In the active apostolate of Christian witness and ministry in the world or for some in the active and contemplative life of the Dominican friar. For detachment is the art of keeping all things in their correct focus. And when either persons or things get out of perspective in our lives, then the real issues of our true life become clouded and havoc is wreaked with our contentment, our happiness and peace of the soul. And we lose our way and are unable to find God whom we can approach only in poverty of spirit. St. Paul says today, my grace is enough for you. My power is at its best in weakness, as he quotes the words of the Lord. In this world, we can only have faint inklings of the glory for which we are created, the welcome God has prepared for those who love him. That glory being kept for us in the heavens will result in our total fulfillment and our being perfected as human beings. God desires, therefore, to give us everything, to give us himself, and he created us for himself. And that is why we discover in ourselves a desire for nothing less than everything, a hunger and a thirst that is never satisfied, a constant searching for something that we cannot quite put our finger on, we are created as all or nothing persons. But it's necessary, whatever one's state in life, but especially as a priest, to ensure that the eyes of faith are properly adjusted and focused in order to keep the Lord ever in our sight, in order to ensure that we draw life from him. Your spiritual life is a process initiated by coming to him empty-handed and unshackled. It's part of our progress and development towards him, which he lovingly and gently oversees and navigates. The invitation to do the will of God in the vineyard of this earthly life as a priest is a challenge to cast aside all the unnecessary things that hold us back, that complicate the issue of our loving, that prevent us from living wholesome and joyous lives of generosity in loving and serving God and one another. So therefore, Joseph, we pray that something of the earthly joy of blessed Pierre Giorgio, will rub off on you so that all to whom you minister as a priest may get a foretaste of the joy that awaits us all in God's kingdom. 
So we pray today that you may be a true and faithful priest that makes that gift of God present to the world on the altar in the words you preach and by the witness you give with your own life. And may Mary, whose own body enfleshed the word of God, our Savior, pray for you that same word made flesh is ever present in you and your life as a priest. So my brother, before you proceed to the order of the presbyterate, declare before the people your intention to undertake the priestly office. Are you resolved with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral order as a conscientious fellow worker with the bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Are you resolved to celebrate the mysteries of Christ faithfully and religiously as the Church has handed them down to us for the glory of God and the sanctification of Christ's people? Are you resolved to exercise the ministry of the Word worthily and wisely, preaching the Gospel and explaining the Catholic faith. Are you resolved to consecrate your life to God for the salvation of his people and to unite yourself more closely every day to Christ the High Priest? Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary and his successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that the all-powerful Father may pour out the gifts of heaven on this servant of his, whom he has chosen to be a priest. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Parte de celis Deus, fili redemptor mundi Deus, Spiritus Sancti Deus, Sancta Trinitas Unus Deus, Sancta Maria, Sancta Dei Genetrix, Sancta Virgo Virginum, Sancta Michael, Sancta Gabriel, 
Sancte Raphael, Omnes Sancti Angeli et Archangeli, Omnes Sancti Beatorum Spiritum Ordines, Sancte Johannes Baptista, Sancte Joseph, Omnes Sancti Patriarchi et Prophete, Sancte Petre, Sancte Paule, Sancte Andrea, Sancte Jacobe, Sancte Johannes, Sancte Toma, Sancte Jacobe, Sancte Mate, Sancte Simon, Sancte Tade, Sancte Matia, Sancte Barnaba, Sancte Marce, Sancte Luca, Omnes Sancte Discipuli Domini, Omnes Sancti Innocentes, Sancte Stefane, Sancte Clemens, Sancte Corneli, Sancte Cipriane, Sancte Laurenti, Sancte Vincenti, Sancte Toma, Sancti Johannes et Toma, Sancte Johannes, Sancte Johannes, Sancte Maximiliane, Sancte Perpetua et Felicitas, Sancta Agatha, Sancta Lucia, Sancta Agnes, Sancta Cecilia, Sancta Catarina, Sancta Teresa, Beata Josef, Omnes Sancti Martires, Sancte Silvester, Sancte Gregory, Sancte Pie, Sancte Johannes Paule, Sancte Ambrosi, Sancte Jeronime, Sancte Augustine, Sancte Hilaria, Sancte Martine, Sancte Nicole, Sancte Noberte, Sancte Antoinine, Sancte Alberte, Sancte Parte Dominice, Sancte Parte Dominice, Sancte Toma, Sancte Vincenti, Sancte Iacinthe, Sancte Raimunde, Sancte Ludovice, Sancte Antoni, Sancte Benedicte, Sancte Bernade, Sancte Bruno, Sancte Francisque, Sancte Filipe, Sancte Francisque, Sancte Johannes, Sancte Johannes, Sancte Johannes Enrique, 
Beate Iordane, Omnis Sancti Confessores, Sancta Catarina, Sancta Rosa, Sancta Agnes, Beata Petre Giorgi, Beata Diana, Beata Cecilia, Propitus Esto, Abomni Malo, Abomni Peccato, Amorte Perpetua, Per incarcionem tuam, Per mortem et resurrectionem tuam, Per effusionem Spiritus Sancti, Ut ecclesiam tuum sanctam regere et conservare et inieris, Dinos, Ut omnum apostolicum et omnes ecclesiasticus ordines in sancta religione conservare dinieris, Te vocamus adios, Ut hunc electum benedicere dinieris, Te vocamus adios, Ut hunc electum benedicere et sanctificare dinieris, Ut hunc electum benedicere et sanctificare et consacrare dinieris. Te vocamus saudi nos. Ut cunctis populis pacem et veram concordiam donare dinieris. Te vocamus saudi nos. Ut omnibus in tribulatione vestantibus misericordiam tuum latgiri dinieris. Te vocamus audi nos, ut nus met ipsos in tuo sancto servizio confortare et conservare dinieris Iesu, filie Dei vivi. Te vocamus audi nos, Christe audi nos, Christe ex audi nos, Christe ex audi nos, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Hear us, Lord our God, and pour out upon this servant of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the grace and power of the priesthood. In your sight, we offer this man for ordination. Support him with your unfailing love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
come to our help, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You are the source of every honor and dignity, of all progress and stability. You watch over the growing family of man by your gift of wisdom and your pattern of order. When you had appointed high priests to rule your people, you chose other men next to them in rank and dignity to be with them and to help them in their work. And so there grew up the ranks of priests and the offices of Levites established by sacred rites. In the desert, you extended the spirit of Moses to 70 wise men who helped him to rule the great company of his people. You shared among the sons of Aaron the fullness of their father's power to provide worthy priests in sufficient number for the increasing rites of sacrifice and worship. With the same loving care, you gave companions to your son's apostle to help in teaching the faith they preach the gospel to the whole world. Lord, grant also to us such fellow workers, for we are weak and our need is greater. Almighty Father, grant to this servant of yours the dignity of the priesthood, Renew within him the spirit of holiness as a co-worker with the order of bishops. May he be faithful to the ministry that he receives from you, Lord God, and be to others a model of right conduct. May he be faithful in working with the order of bishops so that the words of the gospel may te reach the ends of the earth and the family of nations made one in Christ may become God's one holy people. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
The Father anointed our Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. May Jesus preserve you to sanctify the Christian people and to offer sacrifice to God. Accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Know what you are doing and imitate the mystery you celebrate. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Jesus, we receive the mark of the divine and mark of you. We become in our spirit. We that. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters 
they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Vincent, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who hold, who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in help, hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory you venerate, especially the glorious of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysoclus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Davian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also for this, your servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in him, so that what he has received by divine commission, he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by your, the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Grant also your servants who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship for your holy apostles and martyrs, for John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, you fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We come now to the point for Holy Communion. Those who are not practicing Catholics or Catholics who cannot or do not wish to receive Holy Communion are welcome to please come forward to receive a blessing. Please indicate this by crossing your arms across your chest while approaching the minister. Communion on the hand only will be distributed here at the main altar rails. Please stand in front of the black crosses marked on the rails so that you are socially distanced. If you wish to receive communion on the tongue, communion on the tongue only is distributed in the Lady Chapel, which is to the right of the main sanctuary. Thank you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Sunday is done. of Christ, the body 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 of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, keeping his love now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The the body of Christ, Nina. The body of Christ, Phyllis. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Michael. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you and keep you in his love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, perhaps. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that, united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Thank you very much to all of you for being present at these most sacred mysteries. 
made perhaps more mysterious by the fact that we forgot to put out the booklets that Brother Joseph had worked so hard on. He printed 500 copies, I believe, on our photocopier, and they're all sitting in the priory. Uh So I'm sorry that you were left in the dark in that way, but I am here to read out the announcements that are at the back of the booklet. Once Mass has finished and photographs with his family have been taken, Father Joseph will offer his first priestly blessings at the main altar rail. If you would like to receive his blessing, please approach as for Holy Communion. However, please remain seated until after his family have have first received his blessing. Due to the extension of government restrictions, we regret very much to say that there will be no public reception after the ordination. I am very grateful indeed to St. Dominic's uh, Primary School who have been very generous and indeed offered their premises and their uh, playground and their parking spaces for us to use today. But unfortunately, we are not able to have that public reception even in the capacious grounds of the school, partly because we were expecting thunderstorms today. Thank you very much for your understanding. Father Joseph will be celebrating his first Mass of Thanksgiving tomorrow on the 5th of July at the 6 o'clock Mass here in St. Dominic's, and you are all very welcome indeed, should you wish to come all this way again. I want to thank very much our brother Malcolm for celebrating this liturgy for us and for doing this wonderful service of ordaining our brother. Thank you. Thank you for your wise words. I want to thank uh, Father Provincial, I want to thank uh, the student master, the novice master, and for the students and novices or novice who are present today, and for my brothers who are here. It is wonderful to see you because I haven't seen you for some time, and so for us, for our sisters who are here as well, this is a fitting start, I think, to our celebration of the 800th Jubilees, the Jubilee of our Holy Father Dominic, who died in 1221, and the Jubilee of our order who came to England in 1221. So thank you to my brothers for your presence here and for your service. A big warm thank you to the choir, to um, Martin Stacey, who I believe is probably still in the organ uh, box. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the singing and for all that you do week in, week out to sing at this 12 o'clock Mass. If anyone here would like to sing at the 12 o'clock Mass, please do come forward and let me know. (laughs) And uh, finally, I want to give a thanks. They're not here. They're busy in the back. But thank you to Nula and her team who have been working and helping in so many other ways. Thank you to those who've arranged these flowers. And last of all, I want to say to Joseph's family, it's been wonderful to meet you today. I have been looking forward to it very much, and I only want to echo the words of the bishop to thank you for the gift of your son. I think Joseph's mother will understand if I say to her, Kamsia, terima kasih. Um, the parish has prepared a little card and I believe a gift in there which uh, we, I'm going to give to Father Joseph now. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. And may he make you a servant and a witness to the world 
to divine charity and truth and a faithful minister of reconciliation. And may he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
you very much. Thank you. Wonderful man. I stole the first blessing. Yeah, it's just not bad. That's rather good. I'll go back in there. Thank you.